Hi everyone, Drecky here, and today I'm reviewing the HD King V7 Action Cam. Coming in at under $100 on Amazon, this camera claims to film at 4K 60 frames per second, and while calling it real 4K 60 is a little bit of a stretch, for the price, its performance is actually pretty damn good, so let's take a closer look at it. The version of this camera I got comes from a reseller on Amazon known as Depths Tech, and they include a fairly minimal accessory kit. There's the camera itself, two sticky mounts, a couple extra stickers, a skeleton case, a tripod adapter, and two batteries. It does have one additional accessory that stands out from other cameras at its price point, and that is this big clamp that can be attached to, well, anything a clamp can attach to, and the camera just goes on in the same way it would for a sticky mount. It's actually a pretty cool accessory that I've gotten a lot of use out of. Clamping the camera to my car, or to a table, or to a tree branch, it's a surprisingly versatile accessory. The waterproof case is open by flipping this extra latch here, and then it can be easily taken out. The camera itself is much higher quality build than I'd expect from something at this price point. It's a mixture of metal and plastic that feels quite substantial in the hand. The top of the camera has its only two buttons and a microphone grill, while the sides are completely plain. The underside of the camera has the USB port and the HDMI out under this little flap, and the battery and memory card holder are held under this kind of difficult to open door. Overall, the design and build quality of this camera is pretty nice, but it's missing one major feature, and that is indication LEDs. Once the screen turns off, there's no way to tell from the front whether the camera is powered on or still recording. So for example, while the camera was mounted on my helmet and I could not see the back of it, there was no way to tell whether or not the camera was actually recording and I was getting the shot. The touchscreen on the back of the camera is bright and large and easy to see. It's very quick and responsive as well, there's no lag in any of the menus or changing settings or anything like that, the camera just works. And that's one thing I really like about this camera compared to some other touchscreen cameras. Some of the ways to access settings and functions are quite thoughtful. So for example, when you're on the main recording screen, swiping left or right switches between photo and video mode. Tapping the center of the screen hides the user interface, and swiping up or down enters different settings or playback. Unfortunately, not as much thought was put towards accessing the camera menus with the two buttons. The only thing that you can do with these two buttons is power on and off, switch modes, and start and stop recording. And speaking of settings, this camera doesn't have a lot of them. It's missing things like a flat color mode, custom shutter speed, or really any manual video settings aside from ISO, white balance, and exposure compensation. Speaking of video, let's move on to, you guessed it, battery life. No, no, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. Let's move on to video quality. Starting with 4K 60 frames per second. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this review, calling this camera 4K 60 is a little bit of a stretch, and this camera is extremely clever about how it fakes 4K 60 video. Using the Media Info software to inspect a 4K 60 file, it shows 3840 by 2160 at 59.9 something frames per second. It's very close to actually 60. However, this is why the camera almost had me tricked. I was watching the video on my computer and thinking this doesn't look as smooth as 60 frames per second should. So I decided to go frame by frame and count how many frames there actually were in a second. And surprise surprise, there's only 30. So somehow this camera is faking the metadata that tells the video software how many frames are actually being recorded. It's pretending that it's really 60 frames per second, when in reality there's only 30 in one second. It's not like any of the frames are doubled or anything, so it's very difficult to tell that this is a fake. It's a very, very good fake to say the least. So let's switch over to the highest video quality that is actually legit, and that is 4K 30. Not only is the 4K 30 the same frame rate as the 4K 60, it actually looks better overall because it's also a higher bit rate. That means less compression noise, less blocking in the sky, and overall better video quality. And at 4K 30 frames per second, this camera is actually good. I wouldn't say perfect, but very good overall. So good in fact that I've been using this camera as my main shooter for the last two weeks. This is the first time that I've ever recommended an all-winner camera, and it hurts, honestly. I still don't really trust this camera. 
but that's why I was using it as my main shooter. Every other all-winner camera I've used in the past, some of them have been okay, but mostly they've been trash. This one on the other hand, based on the newer all-winner V5-100, it's, uh, well, it blew my mind, because the color is vibrant, the video is sharp, the frame rate is decent, everything looks very good overall. Quite frankly, I came into this review with very low expectations, and the end result was way better than I could have hoped for. As far as video quality goes, during the daytime with image stabilization turned off, it is quite good overall. This camera also has an image stabilization setting. However, when you turn on image stabilization at 4K30, it does lower the resolution a little bit to 3200 by 1800. Because this camera is based on an 8 megapixel Sony sensor, it doesn't have the extra resolution to crop in for stabilization. So I don't mind that the resolution is lowered a little bit, as I think that's better than a lower resolution video being upscaled back to 4K. The image stabilization I'd call moderate. It's not as good as the SJ8 Pro or the Firefly 8 SE, but it's definitely better than most low-end cameras image stabilization. I'd say it's a little bit more equivalent to some of the Akaso cameras or the Suku C30, and that means it does help in a pinch. It does, however, introduce a little bit of CMOS wobble if you shake up and down too quickly. But really, it's all about expectation because this camera is real 4K, available on Amazon for under $100. It is actually quite a good value despite some minor issues with video quality. The other minor issue is with the 1080p 60. Similar to the 4K 60, I counted less frames per second than there should be. So for example, 1080p60 only had about 45 frames in one second. It's a little bit of a bummer that the 60 frames per second modes are not legit, considering that this camera is so good at 4K30, 1080p30, and its other video settings. As I mentioned earlier, the color is super vibrant and it just pops off the screen, making the video extremely aesthetically pleasing, especially in situations like here when I'm driving and you have the sky and the grass, or even looking directly into the sun where the camera automatically applies an HDR effect, making there more detail and color than most cameras which would have really deep shadows. The other reason I started using this as my day-to-day -day camera was the audio quality, which is very good overall. Just have a listen for yourself. 4K30 non-EIS. Look at that cloud coming in. That's definitely a thunderstorm coming. I have EIS turned off just as a little bit better comparison to what the actual resolution of these things are. And then let's switch EIS on. I guess this is going to be my last shot because it's starting to rain and it just got super dark. This is 4K30 with the EIS turned on. Whoa, look at how fast that cloud is moving. Wow. Anyways. This is a raw audio sample with the camera outside of the waterproof case. I'm holding the camera out at arm's length and just walking and talking. All settings are set to default, no external mic, nothing fancy like that. This camera doesn't have those features, but the thing is, this camera is between $70 and $95 depending where you get it, and for that price it does quite a good job. Right now I'm filming at 4K 30 frames per second, it's a real 30 frames per second, there's a lot of detail. And overall, the footage looks quite good in terms of color, white balance, I mean, I have no complaints. I'd honestly be pretty happy with this camera as it is, and that's the first time I've said that about an all-winner camera, so this camera does have a lot going for it. They're on me! They're on me! When it comes to night and low light footage, well, this is where the camera starts to fall short. There isn't much optimization done to night and low light footage, so it looks pretty grainy and noisy overall. It's not as bright as its competitors either. You can actually see in some footage where the camera realizes that it's bumped up the gain too much and there's too much noise, so everything gets a little bit darker. It's kind of funny, the camera's there and it's thinking, Oh crap, I'm not doing a very good job filming this, so it tries to darken everything and make it look a little bit nicer. I'm not really sure which I'd prefer. 
because in some cases I'd want to be able to see what's in those dark shadows, and in other cases, like when I'm filming under street lights, if those dark shadows are too bright, it's just too distracting overall. Finally, let's talk about still photos. This camera is based on the 8 megapixel Sony IMX317 sensor, but it takes up to 16 megapixel images. You can't see it, but I'm doing air quotes while I'm narrating because in reality, since this is an 8 megapixel sensor, that's the highest resolution that the camera will produce. Anything over that is an upscale and doesn't add extra detail. The 8 megapixel photos are pretty good overall, with bright, vibrant colors just like the video and decent detail overall. Most people would be very happy with still photos of this quality, especially if they're just going to be shared on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, any social media like that. Recording one continuous 4K30 video, this camera gets just under 90 minutes of battery life. That's above average for its category. The screen was on for about 10 of those 90 minutes. However, this camera does take a custom battery which is not compatible with any other action cam I own, so if you are going to get extra batteries, they have to be specific for this camera. So in conclusion, and I can't believe I'm saying this about an all winner camera, I'm actually quite happy with this. I would use this camera in my day to day filming. The colors are bright and vibrant, the way it processes video is aesthetically pleasing, there's a decent amount of detail at 4K 30 frames per second, especially with the image stabilizer turned off. Now, the image stabilization isn't as good as other cameras that are a little bit more expensive. The 4K 60 frames per second is a fake mode, and there's no indicator LEDs on the front or top or bottom of the camera. But despite those flaws, I think that this thing is actually a pretty good value overall. I don't expect any firmware updates to improve the recording quality of this camera or to make it actual 60 frames per second, however in the past, all winner cameras have been hackable. So maybe someone out there with more software skills than I have will figure out a way to improve the video quality even more on this. But in the meantime, what's here is actually pretty good. Please let me know if you have any questions, and as always, thanks for watching.